Traders, how are you with Marcello? Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. This week we have the company, the car company Ford, putting in a patent for a curfew system. If we all know what's coming with the new technology in the future. Tyranny, not at all. Amazon kicked out a person of their house because the ring heard a racial slur. Supposedly the delivery driver reported that he heard a racial slur and they locked him out of his house for six days even though nobody was home. And we have the US military in the United States being dropped in over 27 states. Let's go ahead and get started. For the most part, we didn't have a lot of market news or economic news this week. We did have this little fiasco in, in Ukraine and Russia where they reported some kind of rogue military unit in, in Ukraine that was, or in Russia, excuse me, that was going after Putin, things like that, but it was really squashed very quickly, which kind of seemed like fake news to me. But overall for the week, we had markets in the US mostly negative, all negative actually. Canada was also negative as well, but the NASDAQ so far this year has been off to its best start ever in history because you know, everything is fine. Other than that, international market news, the European markets are mostly lower as well. Latin America was mixed, but mostly negative. And then Africa and the Middle East, mostly lower in addition, excuse me, in addition to Asia and the far, far east, you know, Asia, Australia, et cetera. Basically what's happening is, even though the central bank in the United States didn't raise rates this time, they did advise that they were going to possibly raise rates two more times at the end of the year. So what happens? If they say they're gonna raise rates again, that's not good for the economy because since 70, 70% of the economy is consumer spending, and since everybody's so you know debt to their giggy, right? everybody's loaded with debt, because of the bubble that we've had the last 10 since 2009, what is that, 19, about 15 years? The economy essentially runs on the interest rates because the higher the interest rates are, the harder it is to afford to pay something like a car or a house or even your food because a lot of Americans and people around the world are paying for their food with their credit card. So the news of the interest rates possibly increasing even more is not good for the global economy or the US economy due to the fact that it's gonna slow everything down essentially, right? So Europe also gave advice that they're most likely gonna increase rates again. And that's why you basically had a little bit, a little bit of, a, of a drop fest when it comes to all the markets. Bitcoin is the other piece of news on the opposite side. Bitcoin went up over 15% this week, went to its highest point in the last year, hit 31,000, came back down. We're at about 30,745 as of Saturday morning. And then in commodities, the United States has approved for the first time lab grown meat to be sold. And obviously they're not going to label it. Right. And it's a second country now where they approved this new world economic forum, uh, utopia where you're not allowed to eat meat because it's bad for the environment, but they're allowed to find their private jets because that doesn't hurt the environment as much, obviously. So, <laughs> Uh, the U.S. military have been seen in 27 states. There's a stealth bomber over Florida. There were drone swarms flying as well. And a lot of people recorded military convoys in residential neighborhoods from California to Miami. So something is up. I don't know what. Soon. I'll find out soon. Don't worry. Operator of the Texas grid asked customers to conserve electricity to prevent blackouts as they're getting a summer heat wave and everybody turns up that AC unit to be able to stay cool. Now, put all this together, they're pushing hard on the EVs, right? So the electric system right now in a place like Texas, if you didn't know the United States, we have three system, three different electrical systems. We have basically the east, the west, and the middle, Texas being Texas, they're the only one that's self-contained system. And they're mostly interconnected, but it's it's interesting because they're they're shoving the EVs and everything electrified down our throats. Meanwhile, the electrical grid in Texas can't even handle a bad heat wave. So what's gonna happen? You're just not gonna be able to charge your car. See, see how that works? And speaking of electric vehicles, there was a report that came out from Volkswagen that about the pollution of the, of the production of, of EVs, essentially. And it turns out that EVs actually pollute the environment 70% more than gas-burning cars. So 
Take that for what you will. Oil had its biggest drop since early May as the Fed, the central bank in the United States signaled the hikes, rate hikes ahead. Obviously, investors were worried about the, the economy in that in that regard, because as I mentioned to you before, if they do raise the rates, it's put the brakes on the economy. So crude went down in addition to other commodities that are listed in dollars, which are most uh, products around the world, essentially. Crude in the U.S. went down almost 4% to 69.16, while Brent, the international version, went down 3.73%, almost 4% as well, to 73.85. Corn and soybean prices are at multi-month highs due to the problems with the weather, the droughts, and everything that's been going on in the Midwest, there's now concern that there's not going to be enough biofuels that are made out of the corn and soybean to put into the fuel. So there's going to be a lot more demand for oil to make the gasoline that goes into the cars. That I thought was really interesting. And gold and silver prices declined on Thursday. Again, interest rates creates demand for the dollar. Dollar goes up. And then that means that all the commodities go down, including gold and silver. Gold went down almost 2% to 1921 and 20 cents, while silver went down almost 8% to 2253. If you want to buy physical silver, now was a good time. The And just remember, no financial advice. This is just educational purposes only. Financial and banking news. The United States added over 500 trillion, trillion? Hold, hold on. 100,000 million billion. Over $500 billion in debt in two weeks. The total debt in the United States now is larger than the economies of China, Japan, Germany, and the UK. So the second largest economy, the third, the fourth, and I believe UK is the sixth largest economy in the world now. Like we're not headed in a good direction at all. Something that wasn't in the mainstream news, JP Morgan, the, the bank that debanked Kanye West, but didn't bank Jeffrey Epstein, just so we have that for the record. JP Morgan reaches a $290 million settlement with Jeffrey Epstein victims. That should have definitely been all over the news, but there's a reason they didn't release the list yet of everybody who was in contact and friends with Jeffrey Epstein. It's because they're all on the list. Singapore CPI rose 5.1% year over year. So the, the inflation in Singapore, Malaysia, in addition to Turkey, excuse me, Singapore, Malaysia, and Japan all came down further than expected. The banking, the central banks of England, Norway, Switzerland, and Turkey all raise rates, which adds to the situation that I mentioned to you before where the United States is doing it. It seems like everybody else is doing it. Even Europe is doing it as well. And Europe as a whole, the Euro system, let's call it, is the third largest economy in the world, just so you know. Political news. Spain's Conservative People's Party is set to win the most seats in the lower house of parliament in, in July's national election, far ahead of the ruling Socialist Party. Economic news, the number of Americans filing for the first time jobless benefits hits the highest since October 2021. And Goldman Sachs analysts cut forecasts for China's economic growth. If you didn't know, Goldman Sachs is the most important financial institution in the United States. So if they're saying that they're not going to grow as much, probably not looking good long term business activity in japan the third largest economy in the world expanded at a slower rate in june and the uk consumer to confidence did move higher for the fifth consecutive month and more than expected so we have more negative news than positive news essentially but overall, we're not headed in a good direction. The Flash Purchasers Managers Index uh, by done by the S&P slowed down to a five-month low in the Eurozone. So notice we have the U.S. with not very good economic news and the news about the increase in interest rates, which isn't good for the economy, largest economy in the world. China, which is the second largest economy of the world, did announce that they're going to be printing an unlimited amount of money to try to get the economy moving. But... Goldman Sachs said that they're probably not going to have a very good result long term. And even Japan, the movement of business is not doing well either. And even in Europe, same thing. So you can see a lot more negative news and positive news overall. Manufacturing activity in the U.S. slowed down more than June. It's now at its lowest point in the last six months. And in corporate news, FedEx traded lower on Tuesday after they reported their financial results that didn't meet expectations. They already cut 29,000 jobs in the past year. And one of the things that's important about FedEx is that they're 
their results because they're, they're shipping packages and documents and all kinds of things. There's a, when they don't do well, that's a harbinger for a recession overall because FedEx in a way is kind of the backbone, one of the backbones of the economy because it supports so many businesses and shipping and things like that. Tesla surged over 5% on the news that now Rivian is going to uh, go the route of Ford and also GM by using the system or the technology for the Tesla chargers. Hyundai also is talking about making it their standard in North America, which means that Tesla is going to probably get a big payday when all these chargers start to receive all of their customers. That is, of course, if the electrical system works in the summer, of course, right? Tesla is also poised to benefit after China announced $72 billion in tax breaks for EVs. And Musk even hinted at launching another Tesla manufacturing site in Asia, which is likely to be India. Apple hit a new intraday high. They hit 187.56. They're up over 43% in 2023, which is this year, and over 30% year over year. Remember that Warren Buffett, his Berkshire Hathaway company owns, their biggest stake is in Apple. Amazon is gonna make investments in India equaling $26 billion by 2030. They just announced another $6.5 billion in investments. Basically what's happening is that due to the geopolitical tensions that we have in China, a lot of people are starting to move away from China and going to places like India because they're a little bit more business friendly or US friendly, we should say. Airbus received a the largest order of planes in civil aviation history, over 500 narrow body jets from an Indian carrier named Indy. And in trade news, last week, I mentioned about the polluting, the Volkswagen report where EVs actually pollute 70% more than gas cars during the production. And I believe that I don't know if that accounts, for example, when you buy a gas car and you put gas in your car over the life of the car, but either way, 70% is, is a pretty big number. Future Ford vehicles could get a curfew enforcement system. They filed the patent in December 2021. So that's exactly what they want, right? Oh, you, oh, you, you ate too much meat, real meat? You didn't buy the fake meat? Well, we're not gonna let you drive your car. Shut it down. Amazon, I mentioned to you guys shut down a guy's smart home after a delivery driver claimed to hear a racial slur, including when no one was home. So keep going with that technology, guys. And England to Australia on a plane in two hours on a ticket worth four hundred. $30,000. There's a new technology that they're pushing out of the UK where you can actually get from London to Australia in two hours. Now, remember that Elon Musk actually was launching SpaceX, SpaceX technology on a jet, not a jet, on a rocket, where basically the rocket would go up into the stratosphere. I believe it's called the stratosphere, basically into space. And since there's no uh, there's no and there's no atmosphere pushing against the plane in space. Obviously, you can just get to anywhere around the world basically in two out two hours, which is actually pretty cool. Can you imagine? Be like, ah, I want a coffee in France today. You get there in two hours, come back. Isn't that amazing? There's a plan for a real life Noah's Ark floating city that's going to be home to forty thousand people. I find this unusually bad timing like why are they doing this now including norway with the seeds i don't know if you guys heard about that if you haven't let me know i'll include in the next week's recap german government and intel the company that makes the chips are expected to sign a deal over a planned factory in dresden they're talking about a lot of tax breaks because supposedly it's going to take tens of billions of dollars to build this plant again people moving away from asia Remember that Warren Buffett sold his stock in the chip company, the biggest chip company in the world out of Taiwan. If that doesn't tell you what's gonna happen. And international events, the the submarine that exploded with the billionaires. I think it's a conspiracy. I think they just wanted to disappear. And obviously we have the situation with the Russia rebellion, which didn't seem to be like much because there's a lot of fake news coming out of there too. And interesting news, Beijing, the capital of China, breached 41 degrees Celsius. There is the hottest day, shattered the record for the hottest day in June, 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, millions of Australians face the coldest day in five years. So what, what happens is, and what I think is happening, because you know, I believe in all the conspiracies, the earth, while it rotates, has a little bit of a wobble, right? And so now what's happening is that there's a much stronger wobble because of a binary system, let's call it, that's influencing our earth. And that's why we have all the freak weather, the, the you know, the, 
uh, sequía, you say in Spanish, the droughts. You know, we have extra rain and snow, for example, in, in California after the worst drought in 100 something years. Everything's weird. And reports also in Western Alaska are without cable or internet service, which I thought was really interesting as well. Look up the, uh, look up the stuff on the military being launched in states. Pretty crazy. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the preppers were right.